Welcome to the another session of uh, irrigation and hydraulic structure subject. In the previous lecture, we have discussed about introduction of unit 2 that is about the gravity dams. And also in the previous lecture, we have discussed about what are the forces acting on a gravity dam, what is a gravity dam, what is the definition of gravity dam. And we have seen three different forces which are discussed in the previous class. That is, what is the weight of the dam, how the weight of the dam is measured and also what is the water pressure acting on the dam and how water pressure is evaluated by using different techniques. And also we have seen uplift to pressure. What is uplift pressure and how it is going to act on upstream phase of the dam as well as the foundation of the dam. So these particular three important forces we have discussed in the previous class. Now in this current lecture we are going to discuss about the other forces like what is the earthquake pressure and uh, how earthquake pressure is going to affect the stability of the dam that particular force we are going to discuss in today's class. Now let's see why we need to consider earthquake forces. Suppose if the selected dam is lying in a earthquake prone area. So in that particular case you need to have the data of previous earthquake intensity results. So based on this data you can analyze how much amount of force is going to act on the gravity dam because the entire forces whatever the external forces which are acting on the gravity dam will be resisted by the vertical stress which is developed by the weight of the dam means all the forces will be resisted by the weight of the dam only. So that is the reason it is very very essential to calculate what are the different forces acting on the gravity dam. So earthquake force is also one of them that we need to consider. Now we know basics about this uh, earthquake forces like whenever there is earthquake occur in a particular area so there will be a generation of uh, different types of waves like primary waves, secondary waves, Rayleigh waves and love waves. So these four types of waves will behave in different different direction and they will move in different direction. One of the waves will move in the vertical direction, the other one in any direction. So depending on their uh, key important uh, characteristic properties, they will be traveling in different different directions. So Coming to the gravity dam, if an earthquake forces are acting on the gravity dam, so how the dam behavior will be, how the dam behaves because this particular earthquake forces will develop some vertical motion. The foundation of the gravity dam will be subjected to waves. So according to the foundation, what happens the, uh, above the foundation, whatever the body of the dam is there, that will also subjected to waves, vertical motion. So in this particular case, how a gravity dam will behave? What will be the resisting force in case of earthquake forces or earthquake waves are acting on the gravity dam? Right? So here, this waves imparts acceleration to the foundations under the dam as well as on the foundation also. So this acceleration introduces inertia forces on the whole body of the dam. So the entire concept is revolving around what is the acceleration, inertia forces, right? What are the inertia forces which are acting on the dam due to the horizontal acceleration forces which are developed because of the earthquake forces. Now let's see in the next slide how the earthquake is measured. It is measured in the form of intensity. What is the meaning of intensity of earthquake? Intensity of earthquake is nothing but it is the place a measure of the strength of shaking during the earthquake means at what strength the ground is shaking. So based on the strength of shaking of a ground the intensity is calculated. So as per IS 1893 part 1 a number is given from 1 to 12 a number is given which is indicates which indicates the intensity of the earthquake depending on its severity. Now, if you see the India is divided into different earthquake zones depending on the intensities. Like according to IS 1893-1984, the previous code, the earlier code of part 1. So in this particular code, old code, we have 5 different zones, zone 1 to zone 5. 
Now, in the latest revised edition, which is revised in the year 2002. So, in this particular revision, revision so they have made five zones into four zones only because zone one is merged into zone two. So, now we have only zone two, three, four, and five. There is no zone one according to the revised report. So, only zone two, zone three, four, and five will be appearing on the revised map, earthquake zones map. In a similar fashion, what is spectra of earthquake? What is acceleration spectra? This particular things we need to understand. What is the meaning of spectrum? Spectrum is nothing but it is the representation of maximum dynamic response of idealized structure during the earthquake. So it is nothing but the maximum dynamic response of any structure which is subjected to earthquake forces or earthquake acceleration. So what is the response? So that particular concept is called as a spectrum. It is nothing but response of the objective which is subjected to earthquake forces. So the maximum response is plotted against the natural period T. So what is the time with respect to that? What is the maximum response or the response of the structure under dynamic loading conditions? So this particular plot is means plot between dynamic response and the natural period is calculated by using three different methods. One is maximum absolute acceleration. It is measured in terms of three different ways. One is maximum absolute acceleration. The second one is maximum relative velocity and third one is maximum relative displacement. So these are the three different ways it is plotted. Whatever the dynamic maximum response is there, that is plotted in terms of three different ways. So for design purpose, whatever the acceleration spectra is there. So the determination of acceleration spectra is very very helpful in the design of a gravity dam. So this uh, force is calculated by using a simple formula that is force is equal to mass into earthquake acceleration. That is mass into alpha into g. Here mass is nothing but weight of the body means gravity dam whereas uh, alpha indicates seismic coefficient. So this seismic coefficient depends on what is the zone and what is the zone factor and other important factors need to be considered in the calculation of seismic coefficient alpha where g indicates acceleration due to gravity which is 9.81. Now if you see what is the design seismic coefficient how they are calculated means alpha as I told you it differs on different different zones according to zone this alpha value is also simultaneously changes. So how it is going to change and what are the different techniques available in the determination of seismic coefficient that is we have to discuss because depending on the seismic coefficient only so the whatever the amount of force earthquake force which is active on the gravity dam will vary because alpha is varying for different different zones. So if alpha is varying definitely whatever the total amount of force which is acting on the gravity dam will also going to differ. So it is very very essential to determine what is seismic coefficient alpha. So this seismic coefficient is categorized into two components one is horizontal seismic coefficient and vertical seismic coefficient right. So let us see how a horizontal seismic coefficient which is indicated with alpha h is going to be determined. So here two methods are there one is seismic coefficient method and the second one is response spectrum method. These are the two methods which are applicable for determining the alpha h horizontal seismic coefficient. So these two methods are ap applicable for different different heights of a dam. For example if the dams are up to 100 meters height so then the first method is suitable. The first method is seismic coefficient method. If the dams are of above 100 meters high. So in that particular case the second method is used that is response spectrum method. So depending on the height so for determining alpha h we can select our convenient method depending on the height of the gravity dam. Now let's see according to the first method how alpha h is computed how it is going to be computed seismic coefficient method. So according to IS 1893-1984 so this is we are discussing about the previous code means according to 
not about uh, the latest revision in 2002 so it is about 1984 the older version so later on we will be discussing the revised code also now let us see according to 1984 the design value of the horizontal seismic coefficient alpha h may be determined by the following expression so whatever the expression which is visible so that is the one that is alpha h is equal to beta into i into alpha naught so where here beta indicates soil foundation factor which is given as 1 for dams whereas i indicates importance factor which is 2 for dams and also the last alpha naught which indicates basic seismic coefficient alpha naught indicates basic seismic coefficients so this alpha naught will again dependent on the zone for zone 2 it is 0 0.02 for zone 3 it is 0 0.04 for zone 4 it is 0 0.05 for zone 5 it is 0 0.08 so if the zone changes the basic seismic coefficient alpha naught is also simultaneously going to vary now let's see how a vertical seismic means by substituting whatever the formula we have seen that is alpha h is equal to beta into i into alpha naught so in that if we substitute beta value which is 1 for dam as well as importance factor i value which is 2 for dams so if you substitute these values the reduced equation will be alpha h is equal to 2 alpha naught whereas alpha naught is again dependent on zone for zone 5 it is 0 0.08 for zone 2 it is 0 0.02 so like that it is varying so if you know in which zone it is con uh, we are constructing the dam so then we can take this alpha naught value and we can calculate what is alpha h horizontal seismic coefficient okay now if you substitute these values as alpha naught varies from 0 0.02 to 0 0.8 in a similar fashion alpha h is also going to vary between 0 0.04 to 0 0.16 for zone 2 to zone 5 so these are the values we have now let's see according to the second method how alpha h horizontal seismic coefficient is estimated now here according to the same code 1984 version so here it is calculated based on this formula alpha h is equal to beta into i into f naught into SCA by g so here beta and i we know one is soil foundation factor one for dams and the second one importance factor which is 2 for dams let us coming to the third one f naught so here f naught indicates seismic zone factor so here f naught indicates seismic zone factor whereas SCA by G indicates average acceleration spectra so how to calculate this SCA by G average acceleration spectra and as well as how to calculate f naught that is zone factor means seismic zone factor so coming to f naught the seismic zone factors are given in the tabular column which is 0 0.1 for second zone and for third zone it is 0 0.2 fourth zone it is 0 0.25 and fifth zone it is 0 0.4 in a similar fashion how SA by G is calculated means average acceleration spectra how it is calculated let us see so it is calculated with respect to this figure this particular figure so this figure is indicating that average acceleration spectra on the x axis we have natural vibration in seconds means t values we have and on the y axis we have sa by g means if you know what is what is the natural time period if you know what is the natural time period and what is the damping percentage then we can calculate what is sa by g values average acceleration spectra values if we have what is natural uh, vibration period in seconds and the second one is damping percentage so generally for dams it is considered as 5% if you take 5% then 1, 2, 3, third curve we need to follow and let us assume if the 0 0.4 is if the 0 0.4 is our if the 0 0.4 is our natural time period and uh, let us assume damping is 5% then the value of SA by G can be computed like this it is going like this and it is touching here for 5 percent so then the value of SA by G will be it is around 0 0.18 or 0 0.17 in between it is less than 0 0.2 it is showing so like this you need to compute SA by G values average acceleration coefficient okay now let's move on to the next slide now here 
in a similar fashion if we substitute beta values which is known as 1 and i value which is known as 2 if we substitute the reduced equation will be as shown here like this it is 2 f naught into s a by g and if f naught we can assume it we can calculate it and uh, from the tabular column whereas s a by g can be computed by using the previous uh, figure we have seen now for determining this s a by g we need to refer the graph and for determining what is the time period means how to know the time period we have a uh, formula that is 0 uh, sorry 5.5 into h square by b under root wm by g e s here what is h here h indicates height of the dam in meters whereas b indicates width of the base dam as well as uh, wm it is nothing but weight of the material which is used in the construction what is the unit weight of the material and in kilonewton meter and similarly what is g it is acceleration due to gravity 9.81 and as well as es that is Young's modulus of the material right now if we substitute all these values let us consider the wm unit weight of the material in cubic meter kilonewtons per cubic meter is considered as let us assume we are using a plain concrete which is 24 kilonewtons per cubic meter if you substitute that value as well as height of the dam and width of the dam and elasticity we know 2 into 10 to the power of 7 uh, 10 to the power of 6 into 10 to the, uh, newtons per mm square so if you substitute unit weight of the material as well as what is the e value and g value then the reduced equation will be like this it is 2.71 into 10 to the power of minus 3 h where h is the height of the dam if it is assumed as height of the dam if it is, we are assuming it as 100 meters then what happens the t can be calculated like this right so the natural period t value is calculated which is 0 0.271 seconds so for this values and let us assume the SA by G the damping percentage for pi percent for this T as well as for this damping percentage what is SA by G value let us see so for T is 2.0.27 seconds so which is almost here now if you see what is the damping percentage it is 5 percent so it is uh, touching approximately here at this point and if you see it is touching less than 0 0.2 on vertical axis so 0 0.19 is approximately 0 0.19 will be the average acceleration coefficient average acceleration coefficient for this selected natural period okay so this is how you need to calculate natural period by using formula natural time period of vibration and with respect to that and by selecting the damping percentage you can calculate what is t and based on t you can calculate sa by g if sa by g is calculated you can substitute in the alpha h formula and you can compute horizontal acceleration coefficient alpha h with respect to the second method which is spectrum method acceleration spectrum method okay now let us see let us go to the next slide now we have seen by two methods coefficient method as well as spectrum method we have seen in those two methods how alpha h is calculated that is given now let us see how alpha v means vertical coefficient how vertical acceleration coefficient how it is calculated it is taken as exactly half of that is coming for horizontal acceleration coefficient means alpha v is equal to 0.5 of alpha h means half of that acceleration coefficient which is there in the horizontal direction will be considered for vertical direction okay now this is how we need to compute according to the older code that is 1893-1984 edition now according to the latest edition let us see according to the latest edition that is IS 1893-2002 so the formula for calculating the design horizontal seismic coefficient whatever the design horizontal seismic coefficient is there that is calculated by using the formula a h is equal to a indicates acceleration in the horizontal direction z by 2 into i by r into s a by g so here two important changes are there that is z is included here and s a by g is as it is like previous formula in the earlier code and i is also there which is importance factor 
and here one more term introduced that is R reduction factor. So Z is zone factor newly added in the revised, uh, revised edition and R is also added in the revised edition. Okay. Now let's see what is Z here, what is R here, how they are calculated, how they are, they have to be considered. See here Z indicates zone factor. Again a tabular column will be given by the code itself. Zone factor as like we have seen F0 values, zone factors. So here an importance factor is also given by the code itself depending on the height of the dam, height of the structure. And SA by G already we have seen how it is calculated by using the graph. So here the graph will not be there. Here uh, type of foundation and type of material which is there in the site condition of where we are constructing the dam. Based on that SA by G is calculated. So that let us see. So here SA by G is calculated based on this. It depends on natural period of vibration T. So if the T is in between. 0 0.002 0 0.10 then the formula will be 1 plus 15 t so t indicates natural vibration period of time and if t is in between the natural period of vibration is in between 0 0.1 to 0 0.4 then the value of sa by g is directly considered as 2.50 in a similar fashion if it is varying if the natural period of vibration t is varying in between 0 0.4 to 4 then the formula is 1 by t. SA by G is calculated by using formula 1 by t. So this is how it is calculated. Right? SA by G is computed. Now how to calculate this t that we will see. And here you can see the tabular column of zone factors. For different different zones the zone value is increasing. For zone 2 it is 0 0.1 and for zone 5 it is increased to 0 0.36 z value. Now let's see for calculating this SA by G, how T is computed, let's see. See here you can see, based on SA by G and the period of time, based on these two and depending on the type of foundation. See type 1 which is given as in the graph which is given as, type 1 is of rock or hard soil. If rock or hard soil is existing, then for a particular natural period of time, what will be the SA by G value, average acceleration spectrum or coefficient. And for type 2, it is medium soil. And for type 3, it is soft soil. So this can be computed like this. So it depends on the type of foundation which is there on the construction location. So depending on that, this particular SABG values are varying. So previously we had a formula for computing the damping uh, percentage as well as T value. So here T values we have to compute but the damping percentage will not be there. Here we need to consider the type of rock which is available on the base, on the base of the dam. So depending on these factors, this SABG is computed. Now let's see in the next slide. So design acceleration spectrum for vertical motion. So how the design acceleration spectrum is calculated for vertical? Horizontal we have seen we have a formula AH is equal to Z by 2 into I by R into SA by G. So that is for horizontal. Now for vertical how it is considered? It is exactly considered as two third of the horizontal acceleration. So it is considered. As for the older one it is exactly considered as half 0.5 of alpha h will be the alpha v. So here it is completely different. It is two third of the horizontal acceleration coefficient as per the revised edition 2002 IS 1893. Now see here whatever the uh, acceleration coefficient it may be the vertical acceleration or horizontal acceleration it will have some effect on the right earthquake. So effect of horizontal earthquake acceleration, how it is going to affect the dam? Means because of this development of acceleration of earthquake due to, right, how it is going to affect? It is giving two different kinds of effects. One is the inertia force in the body of the dam. The second one is 
hydrodynamic pressure of water. So how these forces are affecting, how these forces are induced because of the acceleration due to earthquake in the dam. Let us see. Coming to the first one, inertia force in the body of the dam. How the inertia force is going to affect the body of the dam. Let's see. See, we know that the inertia force is the product of two things. One is mass into acceleration. Already we have seen a formula. Right? F is equal to mass into alpha into g. Where alpha is the coefficient, where g is the acceleration due to gravity. So here also same formula is indicated. So this force acts from upstream side to downstream side. It is transferred from upstream side to downstream side. So there are two conditions. One is reservoir full condition and the second one is reservoir empty condition. For example, if you take reservoir full condition, so what will be the worst case? What will be the worst condition of this particular effect? So here you can see the worst case is earthquake acceleration acts towards the upstream side, means towards the upstream side. Whereas the inertia force acting in the downstream side. Means these two are acting in the opposite direction. Upstream side, earthquake forces are acting towards and towards the downstream side, inertia forces are acting. So with respect to these two, the worst condition means the stability of the dam will not be there. It is subjected to maximum dynamic response in this particular worst condition. If the reservoir is in full condition, in the reverse case, if the reservoir is in empty condition, if the reservoir is in empty condition, the worst case will be opposite direction. Whereas the acceleration is acting towards the downward direction, whereas the inertia force is acting towards the upward direction. So this will give a maximum dynamic response in case of reservoir empty condition. So these are the effects of inertia force in the body. Okay, now let's see. The horizontal inertia force, whatever the horizontal inertia force is there, that can be calculated by seismic coefficient method for dams up to 100 meters height. And in a similar fashion, if the dam height is above 100 meter, that can be calculated by using response spectrum method. Right? First one is seismic coefficient method for up to 100 meters. And the next one is above 100 response spectrum. So that is how it is calculated. Now, if you see seismic coefficient method. So what is seismic coefficient method? The seismic coefficient method is the method which is used to calculate horizontal inertia force. So how it is calculated? Let us see. So here in the seismic coefficient method alpha h is the is assumed to vary triangularly. So it is assumed to vary triangularly from top it is 0 at the top sorry at the top it is 1.5 alpha h maximum and as it is coming towards the base, it is reduced to 0. Maximum at the top, which is 1.5 alpha and reduced to 0 at the base of the dam. So this is how triangularly this particular alpha h is varying. Alpha h is varying according to seismic coefficient method. So whatever the horizontal acceleration, spectral acceleration is there, that is assumed to have shape of inverted triangle as we have seen shape of an inverted triangle with maximum at the uh, top and uh, zero at the base so here with the base here the base here is given as fh is equal to 0 0.5 of alpha h means wherever the calculated alpha h is there or the seismic coefficient is there that in that half of the force is considered as the base shear which is fh according to this seismic coefficient method. Now let's see, here this is how we can compute what is alpha y. We can consider an elemental strip like this with breadth as by which is b h by b by h into y whereas the element thickness is considered as dy whereas the height of this particular elemental strip is y from the top of the dam and here you can see the inertia force which is acting maximum at 1.5, 1.5 alpha h and towards the base of the dam it is reduced, decrease it to 0. Okay, So here this is B and this is thickness and this is 
the height at this particular at a, at particular this particular distance from the top of the dam now here you can see alpha y means at the selected elemental point at the selected elemental strip at that particular location at a distance y from the top of the dam what is the seismic coefficient alpha y alpha h we know but what is alpha y means at some particular location which is away from the top of the dam alpha y which is given as 1.5 alpha h into 1 minus y by h here y is the distance of the elemental strip from the top whereas h is the height of the dam and alpha h is the horizontal seismic coefficient now here you can see if wm is the unit weight of the material if wm is the unit weight of the material then dw dw small elemental weight of the strip which we have considered is equal to by into dy into wm so hence the elemental elementary horizontal inertia force means whatever the elementary horizontal inertia force which we have considered that is given as dfy is equal to dw into alpha y where dw is the inertia force for the elemental strip whereas alpha y is the horizontal seismic coefficient at that particular elemental strip okay so mass into acceleration then you will get the horizontal inertia force which is dfy now after substituting if you want to calculate for the entire session so you can integrate with respect to this formula that is base shear fh is equal to integration of 0 to h means from bottom to till the height h into dfy so if you substitute this formula then the fh is given as whatever the base shear is there that is given as fh is equal to 0.5 into alpha h into w so here w is assumed as 1 by 2 into bh into wm where b is the base width whereas h is the height of the dam wm indicates the density of the material which is used in the dam okay so this is how according to the first method which is seismic coefficient method this inertia force can be computed inertia force can be computed fh base shear okay now in the next class we'll be discussing about computation of total horizontal force on the dam and its moment how its moment is computed and the total horizontal force is computed that can be seen in the next class till then thank you so much have a nice day